I'm interested in your take, Douglas, on this speech on leadership by an United States Air Force Academy Lieutenant Colonel uh, Bree Fram. Have a listen. All too often, I hear leaders talk about providing everyone with dignity and respect like it's an aspirational goal. That's not good enough. Dignity and respect is the bare minimum. It's the floor of where we can be. We must set our sights higher and focus on intentional inclusivity. So for all of you out there, I ask you to set out your symbols of pride, share your pronouns in your email, particularly if you're a person who doesn't think they need to, initiate difficult conversations about racial and gender barriers, and share a bit of a vo your vulnerability in a way that draws others in. You can just imagine China or Russia watching that uh, and being terrified of the US military. Uh, Fram is reportedly one of the highest ranking transgender officers in the United, United States military. And it's clear from that speech, Douglas, that there is an agenda there to embed this sort of activism in the military. Uh, things like declaring your pronouns, listing them on your emails and on your business cards. What do you think of this? I mean, it's, it's preposterous, isn't it? Let's just start with the tone of those remarks. I mean, it's it's like somebody, it's, it's not just sort of passive aggressive. Um, it's it's pretty much aggressive aggressive that tone isn't it the i'm <laughs> yes. going to tell you what you need to do and especially those of you who don't think you need to know um i, I mean it, it's it's no way to speak to anyone is is the first observation and and by the way i love that camera uh, uh, draw out onto the audience of um sparsely <laughs> attended poor blokes who are sitting there being hectored uh, by this presumably male to female transsexual, um, uh, 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 telling them all that they have to put their pronouns in their bio. And they must all just be sitting there thinking, uh, I hope this ends soon. But I, I would say not only that I would want the lecture to end soon, I'd want the whole era to end soon. Uh, and it will at some point, and I think I can say that with some confidence, it will end at some point because... You know, countries really don't have the luxury of doing this if they're the world's hyperpower uh, and if they're the country with the most serious military in the world that is effectively responsible for securing the peace around the world or otherwise. Um, you know, they, they just don't have time for this stuff. And there will come a day, I don't know how soon it'll be or how far away it'll be, but there will come a day when these hectoring trans activists, they, them pronoun people just all have to go away uh, because everything will have become too serious again. Uh, you know, in one way, it's, it's, of course, ridiculous that we live in this era. On the other, in some ways, we should count our lucky stars that we actually, uh, you know, that the, the situation is still not serious enough that people would actually be uh, put up with being talked at like that. Douglas, we've had Super Tuesday. Nikki Haley has finally backed out of the race. It's, as we expected, Trump v Biden. Uh, what do you think that means for the rest of the world? The, the conflict in Ukraine, the conflict in Gaza, China's aggression. Uh, I know this is not an easy question, but you're about the only person who could... Uh, give us a meaningful answer. Of course, in some ways, going to be absolutely fascinating, in other ways, quite depressing to have a, a rerun um, of 2020 uh, again. But, but you know, here we are. Um, it'll be very interesting. I think the thing to watch out for is, is I and mean, we know pretty much what Biden's policies are going to be. Um, he's been running on them for the last four years. We know the sort of direction of travel. I think the interesting thing to watch out will be what Trump says, of course, on the campaign trail. Um, because whatever people think of him as a candidate, he does actually try to stick to the broad outline of what he's promised in the in the run, in all of those stadium events and others that he'll 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 be enjoying doing in in the months ahead. Um, if he does start to make noises about Ukraine, uh, you know, I think I think you could sort of pretty much believe them. And uh, the same the same with the Middle East. China, of course, is uh, for Trump a very important issue. 
And it's important because he's the politician who changed the weather on China uh, in not just the states, mm. but in the world. He took an extremely unpopular position in regarding uh, China as the hostile competitor that it is um, at a time when everyone else was just wanting to hoover up the Chinese money on offer. Um, it'll be very interesting to, 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 to watch him on this issue because he has actually tilted not just the Republican Party, but the Democrats too on the China issue. So if he decides to run on it in a more hawkish direction, that'll definitely be worth noting. Beijing will note it, as will other allies and, and uh, potential uh, uh, rivals and enemies around the world. Now, before you go, um, it's clear now that the Republican Party is Trump's party. I think there's little doubt about that. Uh, what does that mean for America? And what does that mean for politicians uh, in the UK, perhaps here in Australia, who have ignored their base? I think what's happened with this Trump phenomenon is entirely because of the GOP for so many years saying one thing to, to win power and then when they have that power, behaving entirely differently. Yes, I mean, I, I think that the the uh, Trumpification of the Republican Party is 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 obviously, you know, if, 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 at a conclusion in a way. Um, the the party has done everything it can uh, to try to uh, replace him, and it just just hasn't worked. Even him sitting out all the debates just got him a bigger and bigger lead. Every indictment against him gets him a bigger mm. and bigger lead. Uh, I think that the, the the challenge for the party is that so many people, and it's the same for conservatives and others abroad who um, who have said critical things about Trump, uh, there has been a rush uh, to say um, as many negative things about Trump as possible uh, for lots of reasons, many of them just well-founded, based in people's analysis of his character. On other occasions, as with some conservative politicians abroad, totally futilely just to sort of insult him and to gain some virtue points with their and his opponents. Um, the problem for them all is that Trump really doesn't forget that sort of stuff. Um, and I, I was I was speculating last night with some people that I I, th I think it's going to be very interesting if he does win and the polls currently show that he would in a runoff against Biden. Um, it was a big question of how he fills the administration, uh, how he fills positions. It was pretty tough uh, last time after the 2016 win. I think it'd be very tough this time unless there's some kind of packs in the Republican Party and people who previously bad mouthed Trump are allowed back in by him and they agree to serve. It's going to be a very interesting juncture. We've never quite been here before. And I wonder if he's going to remember some of the nasty things uh, politicians around the world have said about him, including members of the Albanese government right here in yes. Australia. We've had senior ministers be very foolish in uh, tweeting things and saying things, mouthing off to uh, appeal to uh, the Twitter base and uh, I think that's going to come back to haunt them because he does yeah. tend to remember those uh, remember. those uh, jibes. Uh, Douglas Murray, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Great pleasure. Thank you.